Guys, the Sixers are looking phenomenal. The Sixers are looking great. There's one downside from this whole week, and that's Kelly Oubre getting hit by a car. Broke a couple of his ribs, hurt his hip more, something like that. Why does this happen in Philly? Like This happens nowhere else. One of our top stars in the Sixers team gets hit by a car, <laughs> and it's a hit and run. The guy just dipped. He was like, oh, that's a million dollar, that's a million dollar lawsuit. I'm dipping. But yeah, it's it sucks, man, because Kelly Oubre was having such a good year. He's a big role on our team as well. And I knew he was going to be a big part of our team, you know, a big reason of why we're winning. Like before, when we made that signing, I was like, he saved our season. He really did. Because when you look at our team before we had Oubre, we had no wing that could play offense and no wing that's a great defender. Like Kelly Oubre, we, add him, we added him onto the team and he made our team way more athletic, such a better defensive team, more length. You know, more athleticism, like, and that's, that's a big part of basketball, you know, so it, it sucks that he's hurt, but hey, if we can win games without him, when he comes back, we're going to be even better. So, you know, this is good for our morale, honestly, like, you're, you know, our guys are coming together. We haven't seen this before. We haven't seen the Sixers play like this ever in my lifetime. I haven't, and I've watched most of my years, the trust the process era, right? And then we had, you know, the years coming up, but this is the the, the best team that I've ever seen from the Sixers. And the big reason why the Sixers are so good is because of this guy, Tyrese Maxey. You know, and I called this ever since he was a rookie. I knew he was going to be a star. I saw the hard work ethic that he had. Compared him to Kobe Bryant, the way the career tra trajectories were going, I literally compared him to Kobe Bryant in one of my recent videos. Look at this first four years. This guy is taking a, a huge jump. He went from he wasn't even an all star last year. Now he's definitely in the all star picture. Like if he's not an all star, it's rigged. But he's in the all star picture. He has a chance of being an all NBA type player this year. He dropped fifty points. <laughs> like no, no, just for him dropping that fifty points cemented his cemented himself as a star in this league. He's 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 a star. His 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 floor is a star. His ceiling is an is, is an MVP type player. I mean, he's playing like an MVP. He's playing like he's playing like an MVP. He's young, guys. He's young, and he's playing like this. The confidence that he has. We've seen year to year him just getting gradually better. And rookie year, when he got his chances to play, he played great. We saw flashes of him doing this, but to this extent, now he has the minutes. Now he has the confidence. Now he has the players that trust him. Everyone loves Maxi, guys. Everyone loves Tyrese Maxi. He's a leader. He may not may not like lead by vocal, but everyone loves Tyrese Maxey. Everyone can get behind a Tyrese Maxey. Everyone will go to war for a Tyrese Maxey. I've oh I always see him with the smile. Always see him with the smile. He's never down. Even when he has a bad game, he's smiling. He's with his teammates. He's trying to get them involved, playing defense. And that's the player you need, guys. And Tyrese Maxey, the sky's the limit for him, man. I really believe he could be the next Kobe Bryant. I could really believe he can be a MVP type player, a player that can lead to the finals. I mean, this might be the player that Embiid needed his whole career. Embiid played with Ben Simmons for about five years. You know, he played with a Marco Fultz who was supposed to be good, but it was like trash at the time for two years. He played with Josh Richardson as his main guard for two years. He had Al Horford clogging up the space for, for two years, for one year, sorry. And Bede had to learn how to do fadeaway mid-ranges. He had to learn how to dribble because he didn't have a true point guard for five years straight. And then when when Ben Simmons started being weird, you put in a Tyrese Maxey who's never played point guard, and you still have a Hal Neto. He played with Hal Neto and T.J. McConnell for most of his career as well. Like, he's never had an elite point guard. Then you bring on James Harden, who is literally a bot. He can't play defense. He's not a team guy. He played with him for two seasons. And now Tyrese Maxey finally gets to flourish. And I'm just excited, guys. We get to see... This is the golden period for the Sixers. This is the golden golden period. This is the time where we have to win, right? But we're having fun while doing it. There's, it doesn't feel like we have a lot of pressure. It feels fun. So, guys, we're in for a treat. We're going to talk about James Harden, guys. James Harden is on the Clippers, and they haven't won a game since. We've been undefeated since we traded him, and James Harden hasn't won a game since. It's kind of sad, guys. I, I mean... I was so happy, and then I started feeling bad, because, like, imagine you're James... Actually, fuck it. Why would I feel bad for James Harden? What he did? I was gonna t I was gonna talk vice versa of how he feels. Who cares how he feels, right? If you look at these lowlights, this guy quit on us in Game 7. What, what is that? 
what is that? This guy quit almost in Game 7. And now the Clippers fans are going to see what the Sixers fan, fans have seen for two years straight. You're going to see a quitter. You're going to see a guy who, when he's not, you know, you know, he's not doing well, he's going to shy away from the moments. And now he's playing with a Kawhi, a Paul George, and a Westbrook. Your job is easier than with Embiid. All you, actually, no, Embiid's job, his, his job was literally just to pass Embiid the ball. Like, any, I could have gotten 10 assists per game being on an Embiid team. Like, I could have done what James Harden done. And he wants to talk about sacrifice, bro. You didn't, you didn't sacrifice. You still had 22 points. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> but it's just nice to see that the world can understand the Sixers' pain from James Harden. The world can finally see who James Harden is truly. When you're in Houston and you're the number one star, you can get away with playing poorly, you know, in some games. Or you can get away with doing anything. Now that he's in the bright lights of L.A., like, the stuff he got away with in Philly isn't uh, isn't as broadcasted to the world. We're not a mainstream team, usually. You know, they talk about L.A. all the time. They talk about the Lakers. They talk about the Clippers. They talk about the Nuggets. They talk about, you know, the Mavericks, those type of teams. The Western teams, honestly. They really blow up the Western teams, like, a lot. Now that he's on the Clippers, now he's in L.A., if you lose four straight, they're going to come at your face. Oh, whoa. They're going <laughs> to come at you. So, you know. He, he's playing the Denver Nuggets tonight, so if, he, if they can get a win, all this can be turned around. But if you lose five straight, man, it's not looking good. It's not looking good. And I'm pretty sure there were some rumors that he threw. <laughs> this has to be a cap. But after the game, James Harden threw a chair at Kawhi Leonard. Like, he was so angry that they lost, he threw a chair at Kawhi. I'm pretty sure that has to be cap. But if that's true, that is crazy. Kawhi would knock you out, James Harden. I, <laughs> I would do that, but... I'm going to the game tonight um, against the Pacers. I hope James uh, Joel Embiid plays, but he's questionable. And that's another thing I want to talk about. James Harden, I mean, the reason why we're, we have such a good record is because Embiid hasn't sat out in any games, right? We need that continuity. We need to keep playing together. We don't want to learn how, how, like, the only way you shouldn't play is if you're injured, bro. But if you're not injured, just play. Just play. The team chemistry gets, you know, together. We keep winning games. Like, we need that. Um, but, yeah, I'm going to the game tonight. I'm going to be very excited. Let's hope we can get a dub. And I'll catch y'all. Peace.